station. The hobby is the people. Weekly news and interviews. It's your number one source. Sports Card Nation. The hobby is the people. Sports Card Nation. Welcome to another stocked and loaded episode of the Sports Card Nation podcast. The show that brings you all the important hobby news, discussions, debates, opinions, info, and interviews with key hobby and sports dignitaries. Also, if you're good, you know we are going to give away something. Now, here's the guy that wanted the cards more than the gum. John Newman. What is up? Episode 1. Three nine, I think it's been a long week. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still tired. Got just got back uh, from the national. Uh, great time. Uh, that's not the problem. But man, it's uh, a lot of steps. If you went to the national, whether you went one day or the whole week or three days, you know exactly what I'm talking about. My feet hurt. Uh, I slept well, but I'm still sort of. <laughs> Still sort of dragging, so gonna gonna take a little bit of to get over the the national hangover, as they say. Uh, but uh, you know, great time. Glad I went. Also glad to be back and uh, talk about some of the things uh, I saw there during my week. Uh, three interviews on the floor: uh, Peter Steinberg from SGC, Andrew Sigerson, also known as Big Poppy Thirty Four on Twitter. A dealer who does just the Nationals. We talked to him. He's got an amazing inventory. We're going to talk to him about that uh, and kind of his background. And then uh, we got Mark Seal from Tops talking about NFT. So little three little mini interviews will be the guest uh, today. My observations from being there the whole week and now being back and uh, uh, fun times. And if uh, you don't, if you haven't been in National. You know, put Atlantic City on your calendar, get the time off from work. Uh, you definitely need to go. And so for me, it's going to be an annual event as long as I can uh, do it. You know, as long as I have the health and wherewithal and, and finances to get it done, uh, we're going to do it. And, um, you know, it's just uh, where the most people, the hobby going to be in one week uh, every year. You see old friends, you make new ones, uh, the events. Uh, some of the freebies, right? Who doesn't like free stuff? Got plenty of that that I brought back, but uh, just a great time. Uh, need a vacation from it, uh, but no such luck. We're, we're back in the saddle again, as they say. So, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to take a quick break here and come back with our new release uh, calendar for the week. And, and we'll get into some thoughts and observations uh, from me. What doesn't one of one card shop do? From box, case, and personal breaks, there's always fire being pulled. They offer bulk grading subs, and their large store located in Strongsville, Ohio, offers an incredible selection of sports cards, non-sports, and authentic autograph memorabilia. Steve and family will treat you right. Check them out on Instagram at one of one card shop or on the web at one of one cardshop.com. Time for this week's Incoming! product releases. All right, shorter week. You get me to do the new release schedule for the week. Today, show day 8 6 2020 21, Upper Deck Extended Series Hockey Fat Pack and Blasters. Also, today, 2021, Wild Card Matt Football Mega. On 8 11. 2020 21 OPG Platinum Hockey. Also on the 11th, 2020 21 Panini National Treasures Basketball. Staying on the 11th, 2021 Tops Luminaries Baseball. High end product there. It's nice looking now. Also on the 11th, Rittenhouse Women of Star Trek Art and Images Trading Cards. Staying on the 11th, 2020 21 Upper Deck Ice Hockey. Also on the 11th, 2021, 
Tops Allen and Ginter Baseball. A lot of people looking forward to that. On the 13th, a few more. These are all the 13th to close out this segment. 2021 Panini WNBA Prism Basketball. 2021 Panini Immaculate Collegiate Football. 2021 Panini Prism Baseball. And 2021 Tops Pro Debut Baseball Hobby and Jumbos. That's the week in wax. Choose your weapon. Iron Sports Cards is your number one source for all your PSA and other grading submissions. Their elite status improves turnaround times. Heck, they even provide the card savers. Their chat rooms provide updates on all your submissions. They also offer wax options and single cards to cover all the bases. Check them out on Facebook at Iron Sports Cards Group or on the web at ironsportscards.com or even give them a call at 1-877-I-R-O-N-P-S-A. Rob's got you covered. All right, let's get into our first interview before I give my sort of hobby what's up, uh, hobby what's up segment. Uh, let's do one of the quick interviews about six and a half minutes long with Mr. Mark Seal from Tops, and we're going to talk about NFTs. Everyone knows how uh, I feel about those. I let Mark know as well and told him to you know change my mind, and that basically was the question. I want to. Uh, just give you a heads up. Keep in mind, these were done on the show floor with not my normal recording equipment. So the sound quality is not going to be uh, what you're accustomed to. You're going to hear background noises. You're going to hear people maybe talking in the background, equipment moving. Uh, but you will be able to hear, uh, obviously, the question and the answer as well. But I wanted to kind of give you a heads up there. So without further ado... Uh, here's my conversation with Mark Seal from Tops. All right, I'm joined with Mr. Mark Seal from Tops. We're here at the 41st uh, NSCC here in Chicago. Uh, Mark, I wanted to talk a little bit, and this is your forte you just told me, about the, the NFTs. Now, I'm on a full disclosure. Uh, I warn you, I'm a, if I can't hold it in my hand, guy... It's not, I, I don't like that stuff. I'm, I'm old, so I'm the old man on the porch. I opened my first bag of cards at seven. Uh, it was a 1979 Tops baseball uh, pack. But uh, so if, if I can't hold it, see it, touch it, it's, I, I'm not a big fan. So, so sell me on NFTs and tell me what it, it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think one of the beauties of NFTs is that while it is digital and there's no physical translation of the NFT itself, what you end up with is a digital product that is as close to tangibility as you can get without there being any kind of physicality, right? So while you can't hold it and show it off uh, in a digital sense, you you can. You know it's there. There's a unique uh, hash code or key or identifier, kind of like your um, be very similar to a serial number on a card, right? So you have a unique serial number that identifies that digital collectible as yours. Uh, it can have mid numbers, which one came first. Uh, is it a 1 of 10? Is it a 5 of 10? And so on. Uh, so you get the full collector's experience that you would get in the physical world in, in NFT. Um, and in many ways, we are even now exploring with, uh, opportunities for enhancing our physical product uh, through NFTs or enhancing NFTs through physical product. We last year did a test launch with our property, Garbage Mail Kids, where we sent a product into retail. It's called Garbage Mail Kids Food Fight. Uh, that went into Walmart, Target, and some other retail stores. And in some of those packs was a rare collectible that had a code on the back that would, you could exchange for an NFT. So the card itself in the pack, physical, was a uh, rare and collectible, and then you also got a very cool uh, NFT as well. Um, for anybody who is listening, if uh, they're, they're just kind of learning what an NFT is, it, it stands for non-fungible token. Um, and at its core, as I said before, is uh, a, a digital collectible in its full sense. So you, you launched, what, a, a few months ago? Uh, How's it been? What's been the response uh, so far? I think the response has been really good. Um, you know, people want to collect their favorite properties, whether it's sports or 
our entertainment. Uh, we've introduced Garbage Pail Kids. We then introduced Godzilla, uh, and then we also introduced Major League Baseball with our uh, partner at the time, Wax. Um, and I, I think the response is really good. There's some complications in, in a sense that it's not entirely user friendly to get into cryptocurrency and NFTs and blockchain. It can be a little daunting and it can be a little uh, uh, intimidating. So, at Tops, what, what our goal is, is how do we take all that complexity really out of blockchain and allow our fans and the fans of all these amazing properties that we represent, how do we bring them an experience that's extremely user friendly, doesn't require technical know how? Uh, and we recently launched our Bazooka Joe NFTs, which you can uh, go view at bazookajoenfts.com. And we've taken that complexity out. You can go into the platform, you can buy with your credit card, you can then go into a secondary marketplace, and if you wanted to sell your new collectible to me, you can list it, I can buy it with my credit card, you get the money, and then you can take that money out uh, very easily through ACH. So we've simplified that whole process, and are working to continue to simplify that. So we've had great feedback, and we think we'll continue to have even better feedback as we work to uh, build a really robust and intuitive platform. Yeah, and I like how you, you mentioned that there is uh, you, you kind of combining the two worlds, the NFT and the physical space uh, as well. For someone like me that I got to hold it or see it or it's got to exist, uh, you know, I, I like that element. I know uh, uh, there's been talk about even attaching experiences uh, eventually to it. Is that something you can uh, talk about and kind of future plans that coming down the line? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't s specify what those future plans might be, but I will say we absolutely uh, are looking at all possibilities of how we can leverage NFTs, whether it's experiences, physical tie-ins, uh, and, and other innovations as well. We have an extremely robust physical business that, that's been around for 80 years. We have, we've been building digital collectibles for eight years with our mobile apps, uh, and now we're getting into NFTs. So I, I think we're open to all of those possibilities and are actively uh, pursuing which ones we feel are going to be the most beneficial to our fans and give them the best experience. Now, you have a nice big setup with a great carpet, I might add, here. Do you have any NFT, like, as part of the, the, the setup here, do you have anything strictly NFT for someone who doesn't know and wants to learn more? So we do have, uh, at our Tops Digital uh, section, we have some flyers, little cards that we hand out that will link you to our Bazooka Joe and if you want to explain a little bit about what it is. Uh, and I've brought my a couple of people from my blockchain team here who will be available throughout the event and are happy to educate anybody uh, on NFTs, talk through it, and, and hopefully in a way that allows people to understand what it is they're collecting without being overly technical. So, um, and we have a card right here that we can give you. All right, and I'll, I'll post it, so I'll actually post it on social media so people can uh, take a look and uh, find out uh, more. So, Excellent. Mark, I appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for uh, shedding some light on uh, uh, NFT, especially to an old guy like me. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, everybody. Have you heard about Collectible? It's the one-stop shop where any collector can buy and trade affordable shares in some of the most rare and valuable sports cards and memorabilia in the world, starting from just $5. From 1952 Mickey Mantle PSA 10s and Wilt Chamberlain's iconic rookie uniform to one-of-one one Patrick Mahomes RPAs, rare LeBron James logo mats, and everything in between, Collectible is creating never-before-seen access and opportunities for investing in the hobby. Just download the app and sign up with the referral code SCN to get your first share free. Please note this is not a recommendation or solicitation to buy any security. All investment decisions should be undertaken after doing your own research. It's time for the Hobby What's Up, where we go around the hobby world and tell you all the latest news and breaking stories from the hobby we love. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? 
All right, so what I want to do with the hobby what's up section here, being it's national week or the week after the nationals, I should say, is talk about some some things I did there, observations, some of the news that did happen. And obviously much of the news was announced or happened at the national. So I'm going to try to kind of go in a day-by-day order, uh, keep it uh, as short and sweet uh, as possible. Wednesday, arrived into Chicago very early, about 8 o'clock, got to my hotel about 8.30. Uh, that was really too early to check in, but the nice lady at the front desk uh, allowed me to, and there's usually a charge. She waived that fee. I appreciate that. Got in my hotel room, unpacked, kind of laid down a little bit. The show was open, uh, but a lot of people were still getting set up uh, based on some of the correspondence and pictures I was seeing. And so I, I, I didn't really take a nap. I just kind of rested uh, a little bit and then headed over uh, to the show. Uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to do was, you know, talk about all the people that I met. And so that first day, Wednesday, uh, you know, I had I met three people that, that uh, I shouldn't say, they, they spotted me and said, hey, are you John? And so... You know, always uh, a good feeling when that happens. And so I was going to try to remember everybody's name and come on and acknowledge that. But by by Sunday, that that number was well in the double digits. And so uh, rather than mention really too many names uh, and, and leave someone off and hurt someone's feelings, which I don't want to do. But again, people came up to me uh you know, that that either recognized me, maybe saw the pullover I was wearing with the Sports Card Nation uh, logo on the uh, upper left chest and, and came over me, uh, came over to me, you know, so they enjoy the show, listen all the time and, uh, you know, talked a little bit to, I tried to talk to everybody, not just about the hobby, but about life and, and anything that the the conversation goes. I, had a, I came in one of the days uh, an hour early because that's what the media pass allows you to do. And uh, I was just walking down one of the aisles and someone kind of grabbed me a little bit. Not hard, but just tugged at me, stopped me. And the, the gentleman was a dealer. And he says, hey, I got a bone to pick with you. And uh, I said, okay, I was, you know, I tell people, hey, you don't like something, let me know, that's how we get better. So I was prepared for anything. He goes, you got to stop doing something. Uh, and so now I'm like, oh boy, what what, what does he want me to cut out? And he says, you got to stop referring to yourself as old. You're not old, I'm older than you, we're young, so don't do it anymore. And so I got a chuckle out of that, said he loved the show, that was his only uh, complaint. I told him I would try, uh, but I always, you know, it's one of those old standby self depreciating jokes I like to go to. So, uh, I can't, it'll probably happen again, sir, but, uh, uh, it's more tongue in cheek. Uh, you're only as old as you feel. And so, if you're feeling great, uh, and you look great, by the way, the gentleman I'm talking about, who knows if he's listening to the show, he knows, and that's, that's what matters. So, uh, you know, I, like I told him, he was in better shape than me. And, and, you know, another point, I was on the TOPS line for the TOPS Q&A and talking to Val Mars, NASCAR Radio, and Logan Ward, uh, King NASCAR on Twitter, uh, my friends there, and also from Hobby Hotline, and the gentleman behind me taps me on the shoulder and uh, says, hey, are, are you John Newman? And I didn't know where to see. I thought maybe it was the police. I don't know. Just I'm just kidding. But I said, yeah, you know, yes, I am. He goes, hey, I love your show. I recognized your voice just while you were talking. I mean, that really sort of shit took me aback. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of my own voice. And I don't think it necessarily, you know, resonates or stands out. But uh, this gentleman who listens uh, to this show recognized it and put uh, two and two together. And, uh uh, really appreciate that. I'm a very approachable person. Uh, what you hear on this show is is me. It's not shtick. It's you know I might use some funny sound bites or clips or tell some bad jokes, but this is me. There's no shtick or phoniness 
I enjoy when people come up to me. I'm a very uh, approachable person and um, probably too, you know, I, I like to talk. So, you know, a few times probably people are like, all right, I got to go. But uh, but no, it's it's great to meet uh, fellow hobbyists, people who enjoy the same things I do and, and talk. On, and not only just talk about the hobby, but talk about life, meet, you know, meeting fellow content creators as well that I've known in online form, uh, in person. Um, it's always great to you share that that thread in common uh, as, as well, too. And so really had fun. Talk about, before I get into some of the news uh, pertaining to grading, Upper Deck had some announcement. Uh, Tops had some uh, announcements as well. I kind of want to just talk about, you know, my kind of itinerary. Uh, got to do the main stage with Brody the Kid on Thursday. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, me and Brody are, are become uh, good friends, and uh, he's getting taller uh, than me. I'm, I imagine next year when I see him uh, in Atlantic City, uh, he will be. I'll be looking up to Brody the Kid. That, that even sounds funny uh, to say, but I believe it's going to be the case. He is uh, tall for his age, let's just say that, uh, and uh, great at what he does, and, uh, you know, pleasure getting to know Brody's mom and dad as well. Great, great people uh, in their own right. So me and Brody uh, took the stage Thursday, had 30 minutes, and uh, if you follow me on social media, uh, any of them really, I, I posted a, le a letter, an email I got, a, a decent-sized email I got from a young man named Jacob Harris, and he does his own podcast called The Sports Card Second. There's a little plug Jacob, I know you listen to the show, and he wrote a great letter basically outlining how, you know, me and myself and Brody uh, were his inspirations. Uh, he does kind of, you know, Brody gives him the inspiration and myself to do the pod, and it was me talking about the National that convinced him and to convince his dad to take him to the National. So I knew he was going to be at the National, kind of made a little contact, uh, you know, I talked to him, thanked him, obviously, uh, for the letter, which, by the way, uh, I'm a grown man, but hit me in the feels, and I'm not going to lie, really got to me a little bit emotionally. When, you, when you're when told those things and you know people are, are listening to you and you're affecting them in that sort of way, and, and then when you, if you know anything about my background as a coach, as a dad, uh, when a young man tells you that what you're doing you know, puts him in a good place or gives him inspiration. Uh, that really gets that really gets me and uh, cried a little bit. Not you know, not bawling, bawling, but cried. Showed it to my wife, put it on social media, and so knowing he was going to be there, I reached out to Jacob. Uh, you know, let him know, like to meet him, and that me and Brody were going to do a main stage show at the time, and love to see him there. And so about with 10 minutes left, uh, you know, I told Brody we're going to do it. And I kind of let Jacob know it might be a possibility. I didn't want to promise him in case something went wrong or something happened. But said so we may bring you up depending on how it goes. And so with about 10 minutes left, I kind of talked about the email and the letter, what it meant to me. And, and Brody did, you know, the same. And, and we brought this young man, Jacob on the stage, asked him a couple questions. He asked us a question or two. Uh, Brody gave him a swag bag. I gave him uh, a Sports Car Nation t-shirt along with, you know, some trinket stickers, a poker chip advertising stuff. And uh, it was a great moment. This gentleman, you know, this young man, gentleman, yeah, he is a, you know, his first ever national. Here he is on the main stage and uh, sent me a nice, uh, picture that we took the three of us uh and it said uh made his national and uh, uh couldn't be you know couldn't be any better and and it's those stories folks um for me the old guy sorry donald who i talked about earlier but not saying no but you know for me though those are the, this is what it's about you know i was that seven-year-old kid that got started in the hobby and anyone that knows me knows how important kids are in general, but kids in the hobby uh, on this platform uh, as a former coach and, and obviously still a dad, um, it's, it's very important. So one of my highlights, believe it or not, 
was having, uh, you know, young Jacob come on the stage with me and Brody. If you're out there listening uh, to the show, Jacob, like I hope and think you might be, keep on doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody tell you you can't or you're not good enough uh, uh, because that's not true. It's only true if you let it be true. And so keep doing what you're doing, as I told you in person. Uh, I'm here for you. Any questions, I'll be glad to help you out. Uh, So that was one of my highlights. Also, the Hobby Hotline crew, uh, one of the last folks, uh, crews to take the main stage. That was on Sunday. That was great uh, as well. It was myself, uh, Dr. Beckett, uh, Jeremy Lee, Drew Herndon, Sam Shuford from Women of the Hobby, and Chris Harris from Stale Gum. Uh, We took the stage, Brody the Kid as well. And uh, we kind of talked about our observations from the National. We had some nice audience interaction. We let uh, some of the audience kind of come up to the front of the stage, grab a mic and and talk. And it was kind of interactive like our normal show uh, would be as well. So that was was fun to do. Uh, And that 30 minutes uh, flew right by. But it was great to be with those folks, uh, all great people uh, on that stage. And... uh, talking hobby, talking observations from the show, uh, and it uh, was, uh, was enjoyable, like I said. Really one of the last things I got to do before I had to head uh, and catch my, uh, catch my flight uh, back home. Uh, just a great, you know, I haven't been to a ton of nationals, so small sample size, but uh, just a great national as far as buying uh, anything. I didn't buy a, a, a ton of stuff in terms of uh, quantity. I did buy two cards. Uh, I kind of had on my uh, target list even before I, I landed in Chicago. And that was uh, the Walter Payton, Walter Payton rookie. Kind of a Chicago story in itself there. And the uh, iconic. I, I call it iconic because it is. Uh, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, uh, rookie with uh, with Dr. J also uh, on the card. So I, I got that card, uh, the, the the Bird Magic rookie on Sunday is one of the last things I also uh, did PSA five, but and I got the Peyton uh, PSA six, and uh, both were on my list. And that's kind of you know looking ahead to the future. Obviously, folks, I buy cards all year long, but what I kind of want to do with the national and 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 i do save up money uh for it uh each year uh you know i don't i can't print my own money but what i kind of want to do with the national you know along with all all the content creation stuff meeting folks uh, attending things like the tops q a is i want to kind of go into the national with two three maybe on a good year four decent uh, kind of bigger cards on a target list and see how many, you know, I can take home with me wherever the, the show may be. And so I kind of had those two uh, circled uh, uh, for this year and, and managed to get them uh, both. And so it's going to be something I probably do, you know, God will in each and every national. Pick two, three, or four, like I said, depending on the financial uh, situation, going into the national and uh, see if I can add those uh, to the collection. So I got the two uh, that were on my list this year. Let's talk about the Tops Q&A. Never been, but everyone told me, Logan and Val's like, you got to go to this thing. We're going. Get We'll meet you there at 8.30. Got to get online early. They only take the first 150 people who sign up. It's, uh, you know, it's it's limited to 150 people, they feed you, it's open bar, it's a pretty cool uh, event, I've never been, uh, if someone who's been is telling me it's worth it to go, then it's worth it uh, to go, so uh, I signed up, uh, waited online with Val and uh, with Logan, saw uh, a few other people on the line that, that uh, I, you know, I know pretty well, Mike Moynihan, baseball collector, Mike Summer, Wax Pack Hero, uh, Eric from those back pages. So uh, quite the the name list, obviously Val and, and, and Logan. And so sort of a who's who on that line. Uh, if I left anyone up, it wasn't 
uh, on purpose, and uh, we waited. It seemed to take a little bit before they started uh, the signups, and where I was in line was probably in the 30s. So we kind of knew, as long as we didn't leave the line, uh, we were going to uh, be part of that uh, TOPS Q&A the dinner, the open bar, asking questions. They give away prizes uh, and that sort of thing. And so I got to ask a couple questions and, uh, you know, pretty forthright. Uh, you know, they answered most of them pretty decently. You know, they were funny or coy with, with a few others, uh, you know, as to be expected. And so what I'm going to do now is kind of talk about some of the information. It's not top secret, even though they didn't let you uh, video record or audio record. Uh, you know, I can remember uh, what was said, so I'm going to let you in on sort of stuff you may or may not know uh, that's come out uh, from that TOPS q and I didn't time it, but I'd say the event lasted about an hour. Kind of were rushed to, to get to our seat while people were waiting for food. I think they probably had uh, an hour time limit is my guess, and so they wanted to get things going. Um, food selection was, was very good. Uh, buffet uh, style, so you go through the line, put whatever you want uh, on your plate. But it uh, wasn't about the food as much as I like to eat, as it was about asking some questions and uh, seeing what's going on with, with Tops. Uh, uh, Kevin O'Neill was there, uh, Clay Larashi. Um, you know, Emily Kless was not on the front panel, but she was uh, in the room along with uh, Mark Seal, and I, I don't know everyone's name, but those are those are the people uh, that I, that I recognized or, or knew uh, who they were. So I left someone out. I didn't do it intentionally, and uh, open it up for Q and A, uh, and some very good questions were asked. I think even included by by me. So some of the interesting. Uh, things obviously you, you should know by now. Mickey Mantle is back at Tops. Uh, they expressed uh, you know a lot of uh, happiness uh, to that, as well as from the attendees as well. Uh, they lost Sandy Koufax to the other guys, if you will, uh, but they always said you know there's always can come back kind of like uh, what Mickey did. The question uh, you know I asked about. Uh, Montgomery Club, uh, this is kind of the snafu, uh, and in future years, will it be, you know, expanded? Uh, they said, they acknowledge that they will be expanding it. They will be adding uh, more uh, people to the Montgomery 582 Club. They did not go into detail about a percentage or how many more, just that they will be adding more. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what... Uh, comes with that one of the questions i uh, wanted to ask it was on my list but someone beat me to it and rightfully so is you know we've recently seen some tops chrome like cards be signed by nba guys and one of note was tyler hero but i've seen a few others and somebody asked you know uh, what does that mean what is that product what what is how are those cards going to be distributed and Clay Larashi took that question and basically said, stay tuned. That was an exact quote, stay tuned. So kind of coy there. Didn't really say, uh, give out any information. Uh, and that's kind of what the answer uh, I thought he would give uh, to that question, uh, quite frankly. But uh, so, I, as he said, I guess we'll have to stay tuned uh, when it comes to that. They were asked about potentially, maybe eventually, you know, getting licenses in the other sports or genres or niches, I should say. And, you know, they, they said, you know, we'd love, you know, we'd all love to explore that as things uh, present themselves. Kind of the standard, you know, answer that, uh, uh, you know, they, they were, you know, they'll, they'll cross that bridge when they come to it, but uh, they're always trying to, uh, you know, expand uh, what they do in their, their lines. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll see. Maybe there's some doors opening up, and, uh, you know, maybe the end, maybe they know something. I got the impression, and again, this is all speculation by me, and I could be wrong. I got the impression they, they know something about basketball 
that we don't. And again, I could be way off the mark here, but just the just a, a gut feeling, uh, if you will. Someone else asked about with the success of Project 2020, Project 70, should we expect that those type of projects to continue? Uh, they said most likely, and uh, but maybe in different uh, sort of forms, but that uh, it's been a very successful venture form. So uh, I took from that that we will see more art cards in, in the hobby space uh, uh, coming from Tops. I also expect some of the other companies to try to take a page there out of Tops' book, maybe put their own little uh, spin on it. So stay tuned and 2022 for for maybe some more uh, card art if you will in the in the hobby space my last question that i asked was how does going public change your approach good or bad um and basically they gave the answer i expected you know it's full steam ahead it really doesn't change too much of what they do they acknowledge that you know there might be more eyes uh, on what they do, but, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to run a successful hobby company, whether they're public or not public. And so that's, you know, steady uh, as she goes. And so it was a great event. I thought it was kind of quick, you know, it would have been nice, maybe a little longer. Uh, you know, you kind of had to, you know, you sit down, eat, ask, you know, if you're going to ask questions, sort of eat uh, and ask questions there as well. They mix it up uh in, intermittently with some giveaways uh, yours truly didn't get uh, win anything but uh, uh, Val Mars who's sitting to my uh, left did uh, won a mana card so kudos uh, to Val but uh, a great event it's, it's going to be something that as long as they keep doing it I'm going to try to attend uh, each and every year you got to get there early to, to get on the list but uh it's it, to me it's well worth it when you left the room on the way out uh number to 150 which is how many could be on that list everyone got a louis robert uh special national convention edition autograph card numbered to 150 they have made their not my card but a uh, quick ebay check has revealed some of those in attendance have already listed uh their louis Robert uh, National Convention Auto to 150 uh, on the bay. So if, even if you didn't attend the event, but you want the card, uh, you can win it, or you can yeah you can win it via auction on the secondary uh, market. But uh, I thought it was well done. Again, could have probably been a little bit longer, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. And again, it's be something I try to uh, attend each and every year. And I think. You know, by me telling you who was there kind of tells you uh, how well done that uh, event is. And listen, you know, uh, they do it and someone, you know, another company uh, doesn't do it. And uh, they don't censor the questions you can ask. And uh, I, I appreciated that. All right, let's talk about the news of the week as well. Not necessarily from my perspective that what I've given so far has been sort of stuff I'm directly involved in or attended. Uh, There was another theft uh, at the show, and uh, that person also was apprehended. Um, And, you know, I think it's, I hate to say it, but it's going to be par for the course. You get this many tables with some very expensive cards on it. Uh, You're, you know, uh, the temptation is always going to be there for someone of an unscrupulous nature to do an unscrupulous thing. That's 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 the world we live in. It's not just uh, cards affected. We we talk about cards, so that's what we talk about. But it happens in any hobby, any kind of uh, industry or, or uh, niche. If there's a way to steal something or profit from illegal uh, activities, it's going to uh, occur. So another theft, but thankfully the the culprit, uh, at least from what was reported, was uh, caught. And uh, But I did see, however, I did see another post uh, where a card, I believe it was uh, 
a Giannis Prism rookie graded, I think, 9 or 10, uh, was taken from a case. Uh, they have a picture of it. It was Beckett graded, so they have the serial number, and they're basically telling people, if you see this card, it's mine, and it was been stolen. Please let me know, and, and let me know who all the details you can. So theft continues to be a uh, problem in the hobby as we see these cards uh, rise in value or hold value or still be even going down have value uh, people are going to try to get their their grubby hands on them even if they don't do it the right way and buy it so this is not going to be uh, a new story and I, I venture I guess we'll be talking about it uh, later on uh, as well another thing that I thought was really neat was to see a lot you know, the celebrities come uh, to the show itself. Uh, you know, many of the card artists uh, were there, including Ben Baller, Blake Jameson, Lauren Taylor, uh, others. I, I, I don't want to leave anyone off, but I, I'm sure I did. And uh, Steve Aoki and, and uh, a gentleman from Survivor, Joe Staley from the lineman from the 49ers, um, you know, there was a lot of people outside the hobby realm that are hobbyists, uh, the card artists that were there. And so, you know, as this hobby has really blown up the last couple of years, it's you're seeing people from other spaces uh, come in the hobby. To some, that bothers them. I know I'm not in that uh, category. This hobby is the greatest hobby uh, ever. And uh, when you have the greatest hobby ever, you're going to draw people in from all walks of life that's that's a good thing uh, we should embrace that it keeps the hobby uh, successful and thriving and uh, we saw a lot of that there just in tenants in general I, I don't I haven't heard the official number yet but uh, most people felt uh, like it might break the Anaheim record uh, so we'll have to wait and see if that has been announced I have not heard it so I apologize if it has and I'm not reporting it, but uh, uh, crazy numbers. Let's talk about some of what some of the companies released, some news. They took the national stage, Upper Deck, to release some, some breaking news, if you will. What better place to break your news than at the national on the main stage? Upper Deck announced they are bringing back Gene McLeod, the original designer from Fleer Skybox days in 1998 who designed mem mem uh, many of the memorable insert sets from the uh, Precious Metal Gems to the Jambalaya inserts. And, uh, they're, you know, they're going to bring her back as Upper Deck uh, holds that license to uh, use. And uh, the product's going to be called Skybox Metal Universe Champions. And uh, it's going to feature... Uh, an homage to many of those awesome insert sets that are so high priced, quite frankly, today. They're coming back, but with today's uh, players. I'm going to warn you right now, it's coming out in the fall. I expect it, quite frankly, a lot of buzz in the building about it, and I expect it to be probably one of the hottest products uh, of this year. Upper Deck also announced uh, they have the license for AEW Wrestling, a wrestling outfit that, uh, I want to say outfit makes them sound like small, but, uh, you know, WWE's uh, probably, I'd say, main rival and making uh, a lot of moves. I know a lot of uh, friends of mine that were WWE fans. Are, I'm not a wrestling guy, but they tell me AEW is actually better, uh, at least currently. And so that's a big move on Upper Deck's part. And so... Uh, you know, I, I saw Chris and told, you know, congratulate him because I think these are, are both going to be uh, very successful ventures. And then don't forget they're, they've brought golf back uh, as well. So Upper Deck is really, uh, they were already here. I don't know, but uh, some great, great news uh, on their front uh, as well. Panini has announced they have an exclusive contract with number one pick Cade Cunningham which includes autographs, Dibs, which is a live fractional ownership company, just got a $13 million uh, investment. So we'll see 
what they do to expand their space. Uh, a lot of big cards sold at, at the auction houses for the sake of time. Uh, we won't really discuss them all, but uh, that information is out there. And we'll kind of close with the eBay news. eBay uh, has announced uh, that they are going to get into the price analytical space. And so they are developing uh, a price guide, uh, a price tool to determine the values uh, of the cards uh, or what cards they're selling for. Uh, many are asking, is it going, you know, uh, when there's buy it now or best offer and someone makes an offer and the seller accepts it, will that information be part of the analytics? Uh, many people point to if it isn't, then it's not really true. But uh, uh, eBay is throwing their hat in that rink or arena uh, as well as with some of the other uh, an analytical price tools that have already made their mark. So it'll be interesting to see them take on some of the established uh, brands. But uh, eBay's a big brand, so I guess if anyone can do it, uh, it's them. The Sports Card Shop is your small-town local card shop with the global reach. Located in New Buffalo, Michigan, the shop is one of the most accessible in the Midwest. In addition to being an authorized Panini Direct Dealer, the Sports Card Shop carries all major trading card brands, including Tops, Upper Deck, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and more. With all that new wax, a half million singles, and showcases full of graded cards, you're sure to find something great for your collection, whether you're just starting out or a seasoned collector. The Sports Card Shop is your one-stop shop. So call us, come see us, or visit us on the web and social media. Our phone number is 269-469-0140. Website is thesportscardshop at moco.com. The Sports Card Shop is part of the Moco Retail Group, connecting sports, the hobby, and people around the world. All right, time for our next interview. It's with someone that's been on uh, the show before. I know him uh, very well. I had to pull him away from the breakers table. It's going to sound weird when I tell you who it is. It's SGC Peter Steinberg uh, and uh, a different interview. They were there, but they were not taking on-site submissions. And rather than, than be there to profit and make money, they were there and giving away lots of free things, including break spots, uh, gave away some huge cards, no strings attached, and uh, kudos to them. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that uh, during the interview. And again, uh, keep in mind these are recorded on site, uh, so the audio quality suffers uh, a little bit. All right, I'm joined now it's Saturday here at the uh, National on the show floor. Here with a familiar face, he's been on the show uh, numerous times. I've gotten to know him uh, over the couple, last couple of years. He's a great uh, guy. I, I like to think I can call him a friend and uh, happy to talk to him about the ongoings uh, here. It's uh, Peter Steinberg from SGC. John, great being on with you again. It's always a pleasure, man. So, you know, I've gotten to know you. We've chatted even off the record, so to speak. And, uh, you know, uh, a few months back, you, you raise submission prices i kind of told you i wasn't a big fan of that you, you know you gave me the reason you had to do it like you said it was something you didn't want to do it was sort of out of out of necessity uh we've talked about that it's, it's water on the bridge the prices are back down now so uh that that's put to bed but you're here this year and you, you did something different uh, out of the box that uh, I don't think it's ever, I, I, I'm pretty safe to say I don't think it's ever been done at the National from a grading company that you've come to the show, you did not come to the show, but you're not taking live submissions, you didn't raise prices, and besides that, which are two good things, uh, you, uh, well, one's, one's of depends who you talk to, but you're, you're, you're giving back, it's the SGC gives back, you're running free breaks, you, there's, there's no charges for these things, I, I know you, you're doing other things here uh, on the floor, when I when I saw your video uh, release, you know, I took, I, I processed it for a couple minutes and 
And the more I thought about it, I said, that, how great is that? I, you know, not that you need my approval, but to do that, you know, uh, another company may have said, well, we're not taking submissions. We'll catch, we'll see you in Atlantic City. Uh, you didn't do that. You came here not only, you're not, you know, you're here not necessarily making money here, but you're also doing those free breaks and all those other things. Kind of talk about what led to that decision and, and how it's going thus far. Definitely. I think, um, you know, John, at this point with Beckett and PSA both temporarily suspending submissions, you know, maybe, maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but we at the SJC office, we really feel like there's a, a huge weight on our shoulders to provide collectors with a viable grading option at a reasonable rate for a reasonable amount of time. And doing anything but what we're doing at this national would have jeopardized that. This team, you know, it's it's a, it's basically a, a very unique operation, a card grading company. And uh, anytime you deviate from your normal ops, it could really disrupt quite a few things. Um, to speak to that gives back idea, you know, that was something we really, we knew it sounded good, but we had no idea how it could go, man. And I have to tell you, I am, this is the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. I think since joining the SGC team, the single most rewarding thing as well. You realize you got to do it every year now. Oh, I, I, I hope. I hope. Because <laughs> everyone amazing. wants to see that wheel. Like, if they don't see the wheel in Atlantic City, I think they're, they're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're up. To, I've seen you. You're doing the breaks. I, I, you're, you're, I can see your excitement doing them. Like, uh, any chance that uh, you, maybe you yourself, uh, get into the breaking industry? You know, I don't know about the breaking industry, but definitely, I'll tell you one thing. I've never interacted with the hobby on such an intimate level. Just being in the position I'm in, you know, and, and kind of putting myself up against our competitors, I think it's fair to say... I'm a little different than that, you yeah. know, my story's a little different. I entered the company at the entry level, and um, I just, you know, I, I, I worked real hard, and I learned the craft, and I, I just take tremendous pride in, in the opportunity of working in what I love. And I think that with that, there was always a crutch on my shoulders, you know, how, how should I act? Who am I supposed to be? And at this national, I really just kind of let my hair down in a way and said, this is who I am. A collector and you know at times a goofball and someone who likes to have fun and someone who is just as obsessed with this stuff as our audience is and I think it's really shined through and um, I have to tell you man it's like a carnival over at the SGC booth and we came in here wanting to enhance people's national experience which basically means hey go shopping go to a trade night go go you know hang out with your buddies but every few hours stop by our booth see if you could win something and um, it's just gone amazing. It's it's so much fun here. Yeah, I can I can see you having fun. You pulled. Uh, uh, I don't want to. I don't know if I, you don't care if I tell. But oh, you go ahead. That, go ahead. Uh, a Justin Herbert RPA to, to ninety nine for somebody. We did. So uh, like a lot of breaking. Did you did you do any lingo or a boo? You know or? what's funny? You know it seems to me. Remember, I'm no professional breaker, <laughs> but it seems like almost the wackier, the crazier, the louder, the more entertaining, the more successful the breakers are. Um, none of that is put on here. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of wackiness, a lot of uh, excitement, but it's it's sincere. I mean, when we pulled that Justin Herbert, it was for um, a younger guy who had submitted a few orders to SGC, and it was it was like I pulled the card. And you should see how my t I mean, this team is unbelievable, John. I have people coming up to me constantly saying, you know, your sales team is amazing. I say, I don't have a sales team. That guy works in our shipping department, and that guy is receiving your orders when they come in. And it's just so special to me that we have really built something so different. And I think that only someone with my perspective, starting at the ground floor, doing all those jobs within the company, can have where we really appreciate our people, and we want them to grow with us and just continue the education of the hobby. Because it's a big education. You, you can't be grading cards, you know, three months after joining our team. There's a lot to learn. And I think um, we have an amazing team. This is just, I'm ecstatic right now. It's, it's a good time to be a part of the SGC team. Yeah, I can see even, with, you know, not beside you, walk, stopping by a few times during the three or four days I've been here. You see a lot of energy and, and uh, you know, one of the more full of booths, let's just put it that way, in comparison to a, a few of the competitors. 
Uh, what's been the feedback from the general public of, of what you're doing? So I'd be lying if I said, John, there weren't a few people that came up with cards yeah. that, that either didn't hear the announcement or didn't quite understand exactly what we were doing. And, and that's been a tough conversation because it's been a quick one. It's basically, yeah. you know, sir, I'm extremely sorry. We're actually not grading on site. We told them why. But I have to tell you, the reason why, you can't argue with it. You know, I say it all the time. People, people wait in long lines to get their card back, hopefully, by the end of the show. At SGC, our turnaround time right now, which is not easy to upkeep, seven to ten business days. And that's our standard. That's not our expedited. So, you know, I think the level of service being so unmatched right now in the hobby, the decision was, it was almost tough, but it was also very easy. It was just a, a non-starter. We cannot... We can't put ourselves in a position we've been in in the past ever again. And while you're not taking them here, you're still taking them. You're just not taking them in, in, in the only on the floor. That's right. So the only thing I'm doing. Are, yeah, that submit and, and send them to you. That is still going on. Where we can we can talk about others who sort of aren't doing that or, or put it on a price level where they've eliminated that as a, a possibility. So right. So in your you know I don't want to say in your defense, but. You are taking cards, just not here during the show. Yeah, I can even tell you, just for example, um, you know, you see the SGC team here and you assume, oh, that's SGC. This is a sliver of SGC. The real SGC is at home, cranking away on all your orders so they could be back to you in a reasonable amount of time. You know, I actually had someone come up with a very... I'm going to cut you off, which is the fastest in the industry. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, you know, I can tell you, John... A longtime supporter of ours came up with cards. He hadn't heard the announcement. And he was extremely disappointed that the service that he'd been using at the National for all these years was now all of a sudden unavailable. However, later in the show, I received a call from our director of operations back at home. And he said, you know, I'm not going to mention the gentleman's name, but he said, you know, I have an order for this gentleman. I know for, and it's completed. I know for a fact he's at the show. Can you ask him if he'd like his order held? if he'd like his order overnight into the show, if he'd like to send to his home address. So I actually went up to the gentleman who had previously been disappointed, and he was so happy to hear that his order back home had popped. Yeah. It's almost like it surprised him, and it's like, I told you we were grading cards at home. Yeah. You know, so uh, this has really been so unique, and um, I just hope that the people who have been a part of it kind of uh, spread the word about how it was, you know, because we're not looking to pat ourselves on the back. The fact is, you know, we'll put as much on social media as we can, but at the same time, this is no PR tour, you know, this is us really trying to give back to our supporters, because I say it all the time, this has been the best year in SGC history by every metric possible, customer satisfaction being at the forefront. So, um... Again, this is this is a it's a fun time. And like I said, you could have made an announcement, hey, we're not taking the submission and we'll see you in Atlantic City. Uh, you didn't do that. So, you know what I mean? There's a difference between the other two. Not only in you're, you're here and you're basically giving away lots of free things. And so I got to ask you, like, is that something you hope to, even when you get back to maybe take an on site? Is that something you're looking forward to like, continuing? I think definitely. We want to be giving back to the community that supports us as much as possible because the truth is, without them, there's no us. Yeah. Um, however, I'll say this. Right now at SGC, we are basically at capacity with the current demand, and that demand only continues to go up with that turnaround time and that word of mouth and, and more and more people jumping on board. So what that means is it would not be giving back in the form of, let's say, discount codes, because discount codes encourage, hey, you were sending us 15 cards, send us 50 cards, because if everyone goes from 15 to 50, we may be in some trouble. However, look what we're doing here. You know, we kind of find our our, uh, secret sauce as to how we can give back while maintaining the service that all of our customers deserve. So I can tell you our... uh, Head of accounting is kind of scratching her head because she's seeing a lot of large charges on the company card at this show. <laughs> but uh, it is so worth it, man. And, and it, it really is. They're easy purchases. You know, I remember yeah. yesterday we were busting a box. It was uh, uh, 2019 Panini Immaculate Basketball. And we decided, you know, I believe, I don't remember exactly, I believe there's eight to ten cards. However, there's, there's 15 spots, there's 15 lucky uh, people participating. We just decided right before the break, I gave one of our guys the company card. I said, go buy a 
bunch of mosaic hanger boxes. I just wanted everyone to go home with some. Yeah. You know, so it's it's almost addicting yeah. putting these smiles on yeah. faces. Not like I told you yesterday, you're Santa Claus wearing black <laughs> instead of red. Exactly. So. Well, I'm gonna, I appreciate you making some time, uh, getting away from the breakers table, if you will. But uh, uh, I'll give you the last word. Give out, you know, anything, uh, website, anything you want to share. You know, maybe something, comment, uh, whatever you want to. Uh, Sure. So the first thing I want to do is thank our supporters because we just have so many, <clears throat> excuse me, we have so many at this point that, that I, I, I have shaken so many hands here and just, just had so many thank yous and introductions. And I know there's so many more that I will not get the opportunity to do that with. Just guys, please know that the people running this company care about the hobby as much as you. There are tough decisions that constantly be made, uh, need to be made. It's not easy, but every intention we have is, is right aligned with what you'd want. Uh, thank you guys so much. And if you've never graded with SGC before, check us out. It's GoSGC.com. Send us an email with any questions. We're very responsive. Um, we're, we're kind of the... We're the up-and-comers, I think, yeah. and it's, it's a fun time. Well, I, think, I think you're also here. I think you're, you're short so yourself, too. And I'll add, while you're a sponsor of the show, and I'm appreciative of that, I was an SGC user prior to that, and so I can attest to, to the quality and, and the job uh, that folks do. John, every time I talk to you, you're right, it's like talking to a friend, and um, it's, it's been a great time, man. This, yeah. this, these few minutes have flown by, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Peter. Pastime Marketplace has a line of graded card cases that are waterproof, airtight, dust tight, and hardened to protect and organize your valuable collection. Each of our cases come with pre-cut and pre-formed foam so you don't have to cut and tear the foam when you get your case. The pre-cut foam inserts are sized to hold PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CGS slabs. Store it all safely and securely with a case from Pastime Marketplace. Check them out at www.pastimemarketplace.com. All right, my next interview here comes from Andrew Sigerson from Tuscan Ridge LLC. Dealer does, uh, well, I mean, his, his inventory is uh, amazing. Uh, probably one of the best uh, I've seen at the show. Uh, almost a museum quality in itself. We're going to talk about that uh, as well. So uh, he's known as uh, Big Poppy 343 on Twitter. Uh, hails from Omaha, and uh, here's Andrew Sigerson. All right, I'm here with Andrew Sigerson here at the 41st National in Chicago. He is a dealer, and uh, I must say, he has probably maybe the best inventory uh, that I've seen uh, in, in this place. It's, it's amazing stuff. Uh, how long have you been doing shows? So, I only really do the national. Um, it's more of a collection than, it, than, I, than I am a dealer, but I love to put out the really nice stuff we have just so people can be attracted to it that also collect that kind of stuff because they have stories behind their pieces just like I do. You know, I've been setting up at the National, primarily Chicago and Cleveland, for the last uh, eight years or so. So just there, that's, that's sort of different than probably most dealers. Do. I'm a dealer myself, and uh, I don't do the National, but I do some of the, the smaller shows. Um, I mean, the inventory is uh, amazing, Andrew. You got uh, historical cards, president uh, signatures. Uh, you got a JFK piece here, which is uh, his autograph and, and a part of the, the limo from the, the assassination. Just um, where? Uh, how do you get? How do you acquire the inventory that you have? Yeah, I think like any collector, it's just dedication to watching all the various places that people sell stuff. And, and then just having some specific niches um, to, in, in that way, sometimes you just get contacted privately. Uh, but the historical stuff, I, I love history. My office has a lot of historical stuff on the walls, documents, etc. But on the card side, it's just fun because, you know, I'll have families come up to the booth. It'll be the husband, the wife, the kids, and they'll look at a John Hancock cut or a Lincoln cut. And, and just their eyes light up because it's something you don't see in a show like this typically very often. And and you can just appreciate it because it's well done. And the John Hancock we have, I mean, it's probably the largest signature you'd ever see of a of uh, somebody famous like that. It's a massive, on a transcendent piece, so it really kind of pops when you see it. But just the the joy that people have seeing some of this stuff because it's things they've never seen and maybe didn't even know existed, which makes it really cool. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been doing this a long time, and uh, my eyes get wide every time I, I see your stuff. And I know you post on social media. I said, uh, was it better yet? Let's see it. Let's see it in person. So uh, other than, you know, you set up at the Nationals, do you sell online a lot? Where, where's your, I mean, are you doing that all year in the Nationals, the show you do? How, how does that work? You know, I really don't sell other than maybe a few pieces here and there privately. Um, I don't sell on eBay. I buy a lot on eBay, but I don't sell. And then I, you know, I work with the Omaha Sports Cards guys, which is my local shop. And and so if I open anything or I have something that I want to move, I'll just give it to them. If I if it's something I don't want anymore, that to, that I think should just sell on eBay or whatever. But any of my big stuff, the only time I sell it is because I think I can upgrade what I'm trying to accomplish with my collection. So that's why that's another reason I bring it out is that some people will come to the booth with just these incredible pieces. Uh, and and we'll, we'll do a deal. Like yesterday, I sold a John F. Kennedy cut, which is hard for me, but I was able to turn that money into, you know, a Mrs. Abraham Lincoln cut and a Hans Christian Anderson, the only known cut ever produced. Wow. And, uh, and also a Ulysses S. Grant transcendent cut. So that's a pretty neat trade uh, to get upgrade and get some people I don't have. I got to ask you, I mean, again, your inventory is amazing. Is there anything not here like that you won't even bring to get the temptation to be offered and, and maybe sell it and, and first, you know, maybe have a little seller's remorse? Is there anything we don't see here? There's a lot of stuff. I have a, I don't bring any of my game used full pieces. So I have jerseys and bats. Uh, I have a huge game used bat collection. I never bring that stuff out. I, I never want to, I have a roof bat. I never want to get rid of that unless I'm dead. Yeah. You know, or I'm bankrupt. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's some other pieces I didn't bring out. You know, there's some Jordan pieces I didn't bring. You know, several years ago, like most collectors, I sold a lot of my Jordan stuff to try and buy other stuff. And I don't regret buying the other stuff, but what it's doing now is ridiculous. And those are pieces I'll never have back. Um, but yeah, there's there's some pieces at home. There's Walt Disney and Picasso and and uh, um, Ty Cobb pieces. Just just some stuff. Yeah. Crazy. I gotta ask you. I mean, you have quite the inventory. Is there something you that's on your list to own that you don't yet? Yeah, there's a couple pieces. I have the Joe Jackson bat knob out of National Treasures. There is a barrel, uh, and and it sold privately many years ago. I'd love to have the set, but you never see it. And then my my two biggest pieces I'm trying to chase. I really want a John Wilkes Booth cut, and I really want a Ben Franklin cut. Uh, and I think a Ben Franklin is attainable. I'm not sure I'll ever have a John Wilkes Booth. There's only maybe five of them out there, and they're all in private collections. Never, they've never made a card cut, so it's a document. But yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I wouldn't even think where, like where to even think like where you'd find something like that. Maybe just something. Yeah, Heritage, Heritage did a big sale, a Lincoln sale, a guy died, and his Lincoln collection came up, and it was many years ago where I couldn't afford it, and, uh, you, may, you know, like anything else, maybe someday it'll come up again, but who knows. Uh, well, it's funny, I, 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 when hearing you talk, you refer to yourself more as a collector than a dealer, yeah, you have one of probably the best inventories uh, on the tables at the show, but uh, you, 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 it's almost like PC sort of for sale kind of a deal. Yeah, you know, there's some cases here where I'll sell some stuff, you know, maybe some of the younger players or some of the veterans um, that aren't that important to me, but create some interest and also create some cash flow, yeah. you know, so that kind of stuff. You know, I've got some lower grade Sotos and Guerreros and Otanis, and so that's easy stuff to move at a show like this, and, and she probably know, and I, I wanted to say so I don't forget, this show has been incredible. I mean, the first two days of the show, it's like nothing I've ever seen. And I was going to say, yeah, we still got to the whole rest of today, Friday, and Saturday, and even Sunday. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been amazing. Well, Andrew, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day and, and talking about uh, what you do and, and what you have. And uh, so if uh, this is going to air after the national, but the next time he's, he's the national comes, come check out uh, Andrew's inventory. It's almost like a, it's museum quality. That's how, that's what I'll put. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. I want to thank everyone I saw at the National that came up, everybody. It was a great week. Uh, yeah, I'm tired, but well worth that, that tiredness. I want to thank my guests, Peter Steinberg, Mark Seal, Andrew Sigerson. I want to thank everyone I hung out with uh, the week in Chicago. And uh, great event. Uh, and if you ever... You know, if you haven't went to the National yet, 
Um, it's, it's it's really a, a must do uh, for any hobbyist, I, I believe. And so hopefully, uh, Atlantic City's on the clock. It's it's uh, they're up next. For me, it's in driving distance, so that'll be that'll be uh, easier for me. And I believe my wife and son uh, will make that trip in, in 2022. And so uh, we'll start counting down the days again until the national comes back. Around, So I want to thank everybody out there uh, for listening. Uh, all the people that came, you know, someone asked me what was the most surprising thing. I think it was just the people that approached me and told me what they thought of the show or they're a fan of the show. And, and I, like I told you in person, I can't thank you enough. That means everything. Uh, it's why we're here. It's why I, we do this. And, uh, uh, without you, uh, there is no sports car nation or hobby quick hits. So uh, I appreciate that uh, sincerely. So we'll we'll keep the the outro here uh, short and sweet. But uh, we'll see you next week uh, back here on Friday. Another uh, hobby quick hits on Monday. Take care. We'll see you soon. That's a wrap on another edition of the Sports Card Nation podcast. Thank you to all the awesome listeners out there. Without you, there is no us. Thank you to all our great guests who drive this show and also our wonderful sponsors who help us produce the great hobby content every week. Remember, another Hobby Quick Hits episode drops every Monday and Sports Card Nation returns again next Friday. If you like the shows, we appreciate those positive reviews. Be well, and always remember, the hobby is the people.